In this lesson, I'm going to talk about the various ways that we can size type. You're probably already familiar with pixels. They are a absolute value, and we use them in all sorts of applications, not just web design. M's are a relative unit of measurement, and an M is always relative to its parent's font size. So, for instance, if the parent element's font size is 16, by typing two M's, that's going to make it 32. REM stands for root M, and it's relative to the HTML's elements font size. So one REM measures the same throughout the whole entire document. Sometimes M's are a little bit difficult to maintain when you start to nest various rules too deeply, but REMs make things a lot easier. So we're going to go ahead and talk about how we can use REMs in this exercise. Here I have three identical articles and they contain just about the same content. H1, H2, paragraph, and a list with a nested list item. Here's the starting HTML code that we're going to be using. Within the body I have a section that wraps around everything and inside the section I have essentially three identical articles. So here's the first article. I've given it a class name of one so that I could hook this particular article independently of the others and all the articles are essentially set up the same way. This one has an H1, an H2, a paragraph, an unordered list that contains a nested unordered list. And you can see that here is an article with a class name of two it's set up exactly the same way with the exact same content. And finally, here's the third article, and it just has a class name of three. So that's our HTML that we're going to be starting with. I have already created a little bit of CSS styles. I'll just go ahead and explain the base CSS before we get started. The first style is the universal selector, and it's just zeroing everything out. Then I have a rule for the section and it sets the font family, the overall width of the container, the padding, and notice I'm using percentages because I want this to act responsively. And then I have margin of zero for top and bottom and auto for right and left so that that content will stay centered on the screen. Next I have a general rule for the articles. It sets their overall width to 27% with padding of 2% on the right and left, and I have a margin on the right of 2.5%. And then I've floated those on the left, and I've given them a border, a gray border. On the third article, I'm removing the margin on the right, since there's not an article that follows it, so there's no need for it to have margin. And that will just allow me to maximize the space that I have available. For the H1, I'm setting a color to blue, and for H2, I'm just specifying that the font way be normal and the color be gray. So those are our starting CSS rules. I've also gone ahead and just made the selectors for the rules that we're going to be working on this lesson. So I have selectors for the H1s that are children of the one article, the H2s, the paragraphs, and the unordered lists that are all children of the one article. And then that goes ahead and specifies the two article and the three article. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using pixels to size the first article. We're going to be using M's to size the second article. And then we're going to be using REMs to size the third article. So once again, this is what our page looks like with the base styles, but we haven't implemented any specific font sizing or margins or line height or anything, and that's what we're going to be working on in this exercise. Really quickly, I want to jump over to can I use, and I just want to show you the support for REMs. So this talks about REMs, which is the root M unit. It's a recommendation as far as a candidate, but you can see that it's pretty well supported in just about all of the browsers. Where stuff starts to break is IE8, so if you are trying to support versions of IE8 and lower, you'll have some issues there. And then if you're using Opera Mini, that might be an issue too, but you know that's probably not a deal breaker. So anyways, just be aware of this because if you are trying to support those older versions of IE, then you're going to need to provide some fallback content for when you utilize REMs. 
So as I mentioned, what we currently have is a flexible, responsive page, and you can see that as I resize the page, the articles will grow and shrink. I just wanted to point that out, and that's a result of us using percentages for the overall widths for the various items. Let's jump into our HTML editor so that we can set the values for the, we'll start off with the first article, and as I mentioned, we're going to go ahead and specify the values as pixels. I'm going to start by specifying the font size, and we'll define that as being 36 pixels for the H1. We're going to specify a margin on the bottom, and that's going to be 24 pixels. And I'm going to specify line height, and the line height is also going to be 24 pixels. So this is going to define my H1. I'm going to just copy these lines of code because it's going to be kind of similar what we're going to do on the H2, except that we're going to define the font size as being 28 pixels for H2. On the H2, our margin on the bottom is going to be reduced down quite a bit. It's just going to be 6 pixels, and we'll keep the line height at 24. For our paragraphs, we're going to specify that the font size is 14 pixels, and we are going to use a margin on the bottom of 24 pixels and a line height of 24. And then finally, for our unordered lists, we're going to specify a font size of 14, and we're going to use shorthand notation to define margin here. So for the unordered lists, we're going to specify our margin on the top and the bottom as zero and on the right and the left we're going to set it to 28 pixels and I don't need line height for my unordered list. So if we save the page and if we refresh it in the browser you can see that everything has updated and changed within the first article. So this is our pixel based article. So you can see that now the H1, H2 are sizing, the line height is coming in and this is how we want this to look. Now the downside of using pixels, of course, is that pixel values are an absolute value. So that can become problematic when the user has to resize the size of their fonts in some of the older browsers especially. And it also can be a problem when you are viewing things on the mobile. It is recommended that you use relative values for sizing and we've already talked about the need to do that, and M's and REM's are going to give us this. So let's talk about how we can convert these values that we're using in our first article, the pixel article, and convert them into units that will work with M's and REM's. So in article two, all of our sizes are gonna be using M's. So the first thing I want to do is I want to specify that my font size is going to be 36 pixels. Now how do I get to 36 pixels using M's? Well, the formula is relatively simple. You take the desired size and you divide it by the root size of the document. Well, the root size of our font within our document is by default set to 16 pixels. Most browsers will render the default base unit of fonts as 16 pixels. So without ever specifying what the font size is, if we actually go into, I'm in Chrome right now, and I'm going to open up my developer tools for a moment so that I can show you where this is. If I take the developer tools and use the little magnifying glass tool to inspect an element, I'm going to hover over the paragraph. We'll start with the pixel paragraph. And you can see that it's going to show me what the actual size is for that particular element. So we have a font size of 14 pixels, and then the margin of 24 and the line height of 24 pixels. And that's what we defined. If we go into the computed tab, this is going to show us how the browser is actually rendering those values. So you can see that once again, font size of 14, line height and margin bottom of 24. So that's what we would expect. If we use the selector and select one of the paragraphs from the other articles, which at this point have not been styled, we can see that there is no unit, there's no rule there. Here's just a blank rule. And if we go into the computed styles and we look, we can check and see 
what the sizing is. So you can see that there isn't actually any sizing that's being applied to this these particular units because it hasn't been specified. If we come back here, you can see that the user agent which is the browser's styles that are just built into the browsers are rendering this paragraph as 1M. So 1M is going to be equivalent to 16 pixels. So because we know that number, we can then go ahead and take our target size, which is 36 pixels, and we can divide that into 16. So I like to make a little note right here just so that I can remember what's happening. So if I'm taking 36 and I divide it into 16, and if you grab a calculator and do some quick calculations, whenever I'm designing websites, I always find it helpful to have a calculator in front of me. But this is going to give me a value of 2.25. That's gonna be the units that we're gonna plug in to be equal to our font size. So I'm gonna specify that the font size is 2.25 M's. That's gonna give us the font size. Now the margin on the bottom is going to be calculated a little bit differently. So instead of specifying the font size of 16, now we've specifically set the H1 font size to 2.25 M's, which we can think of as 36. So in order to figure out what the units needs to be for our margin on the bottom, so that we'll get 24, we're going to actually be here, we're going to actually be dividing the target by the context to get the line height. So in this case, our target is 24 pixels, and we'll divide that by our context. Our context is no longer 16 because we've set the font size to 36 by specifying the unit of M's to be 2.25. So I'm going to go ahead and say 24 divided by 36, and if I just do some quick calculations, that's going to go ahead and give me a value of, and it's not a pretty number, but it is 6666666, so seven sixes, and I'll just copy that, and then I'm going to plug that in here, so point six 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 whatever, and then we'll put M's for the margin on the bottom. And finally, I'm going to go ahead and specify, because we want the same unit for our line height, that same unit right there. You don't need to pass on a unit to line height because it's going to, it, it's based on the font size. So because we're using M's, it's going to go ahead and utilize that same setting. If we save now and we go back to our browser, let me just show you what happens in the computed styles again. So here, you can see that my H1 looks the same as the pixel-based H1. If I click on it with the inspect element, the font size is set to 2.25 M's and the margin bottom and line height are set to the 666 number. If we go into the computed styles, you can now see that the font size is being set to 36 pixels. So because of that rule, the 2.25 M's, it's setting the font size to the equivalent of 36 pixels. Our line height is being set to 23.999, you know, whatever this number is. Obviously, if we just rounded, that would become 24. And so, therefore, we're getting the same unit. So, this is how you're going to calculate those numbers as you transform your page from the pixels into the M's. So, we'll jump back into our code editor. And we're going to do a similar type of thing here for the H2. I'll just copy this. And I like to put these comments in so that I can remember where these numbers are being generated from. Because obviously, when you do this, the numbers aren't super intuitive. So again, for our H2s, and if we look up here for reference, we want the font size for H2s to be 28 pixels. So our target is 28. We're going to divide by 16, and that is going to give us a value of 1.75. So I'll just copy this, and we'll plug it in. So that's going to be the font size. The margin bottom for H2s is 6 pixels. So let's go ahead and plug those numbers in. Here we're going to divide 6 by our context, which is 28, and then that is going to give us a value of point. 
and not a pretty number, but the computer is able to parse these numbers just fine, so we don't have to worry about rounding these numbers. We actually don't want to round them. Uh, it's better to use the, the value that you get from your calculations. And then for H2 line height, we're using 24. So again, if we come down here, and we might want to make a little notation of what we're doing right here. To calculate this value, I'm going to divide 24 into my context, which is 28, and that's going to give us a value of 0 0.8571428. And I don't need to put units on line height. So if we save once again, and we jump into the browser and we check this out, we can see that now the H2 matches the pixel-based H2. And if we check our computed styles, you can see that the font size is 28 pixels, the line height is this number that for all intents and purposes is 24, and the margin on the bottom is for all intents and purposes 6. So we're getting the numbers that we want with these values. Let's move on and set our paragraph settings. Font size for paragraph is 14 pixels, so we'll just change this and say 14 divided by 16. The value here is going to be 0.875, so we'll go ahead and plug that number in, and that's going to be M's once again. And then for our margin bottom, if we check the margin bottom and the line height, they're both 24. The calculations for this are going to be 24, which is the target. The context in this case is going to be 14. And then our value is going to become 1.7142857. And I'll just copy that <laughs> so I don't have to write it again. And then I'm going to use that exact same value for the line height, except I will eliminate the M's unit. So that's going to be my paragraph. And finally, for our unordered list, if we check up here, we're using a font size of 14 pixel, and then we're using margins on the right and left of 28 pixels. So we can calculate what those numbers are going to be. I'm going to plug in my font size is going to be exactly the same as what I'm using on the paragraphs. So I'll go ahead and specify my font size right here. And then we'll go ahead and set the margin and the margin for the top and the bottom is going to be 0. And on the right and the left, we want to use 28 pixels. So again, if we plug this into our formula, it's going to be 28 divided by 16. And that gives me a value of 1.75. All right, let's save it. And let's take a look in the browser. Now we can see that the paragraph text and the unordered list well, part of the unordered list anyway, are looking the way we want. You can see that there's some issues with my nested lists. This is a result of using M. So we'll come back and we'll address this when we're done with the rest of our CSS. I'm going to configure the CSS values for the rem article next. Some of these values we can take from the M's. They will be similar. There is going to be certain situations where the values are going to change, though, and we'll talk about that. I'll just copy the values that I have for my H1, and we'll paste these in. The target size that we want to use is still 36 pixels, and we're dividing that into the root value of 16. So again, this is going to stay as 2.25 rems. So I'll just change that to a rem value instead of leaving it at m's. Now, for the margin on the bottom, the context Remember that we always divide target by context. In this case, because we're using rems, everything is based on the root value. We don't go back to that calculated font size anymore. So this calculation is going to change. We're going to go ahead and specify here, for our calculations anyways, that we want to divide 24 by 16. That's the base font size. So you can see that where this changes, instead of mimicking what we did up here with the M's, 
24 divided by 36. Remember, our context was 36. Here, the context is the base unit because we're using rem. So we're going to divide 24 by 16. That gives us a value of 1.5. So we'll change this to 1.5 rems. And then the line height is going to remain the same. And the reason the line height remains the same, remember, is line height is based on font size. So here, our target is 24 pixels, just, you know, that's the size, 24 pixels that we're basing this off of. But the context isn't 36 any, or isn't 16 anymore, it's 36. And that gives us this 666 value that we used with M. So let me just show you this in the computed size of the browser, just in case you don't believe me. You can see visually it looks the same, the H1. And if I select that element and we look in our computed value, font size is 36, line height is rounded to 24, and look at the margin. Margin on the bottom is 24. So even though we're using a completely different value, for the margin on the bottom, we have to. And that's because of how REMs calculate. They're based on that root font size instead of on that parent element. So this is gonna give us a lot of freedom when things are nested. And you already see that there is a problem with our nested lists. So we'll need to address that. And let's see how that plays out with our, our REM values as we proceed through this. I'm gonna plug in the numbers for H2. So once again, H2, if we reference, I'm going to copy what I have here, because that'll save me a little bit of typing. The font size that we're targeting is 28 pixels. The font size value stays the same for rem. So I'll simply just change the units to rems. So we're still going to use 1.75 for the size. Now, the margin on the bottom is going to change. We want the margin on the bottom to be 6, but our context is not 28 here, it's 16. So that's gonna give us a value of 0.375, and we'll set that to rems, and then the line height is going to remain the same. 24 is the target, 28 is the context, so that number remains the same. Let's get the paragraph styles, so I'll copy these from our M units. We'll come down here and we'll paste them in. Font size is going to remain the same. Where target size is 14, we're dividing that by 16. We just need to change the units to rems. The margin on the bottom, we want it to be 24, but we're not dividing it by 14. We're going to change this number to 16, and that's going to give us a value of 1.5. So we'll update this with 1.5 rems. And then the line height is going to remain the same, 24 divided by 14. So that remains the same. And then for our unordered list, we'll just copy this. We're going to paste that in. Font size is going to remain the same. And then the margin is going to remain the same as well. So those things will remain the same. We just need to change these to rems instead of ms. So if we save and we look in the browser and we refresh, we can now see that for all intensive purposes, the sizing and the spacing of all of these pixels, M's, and rem articles are essentially the same. There is an issue with the nested list, and that's a result of using M's. You can see when we use rems, though, we don't have that issue. So this is a big reason why rems might be a better unit for you to incorporate into your projects, especially when you're going to be making styles that are, are going to be nested. So when you have more complex page layouts and you're using nesting, the rems are going to solve these problems. Because we're specifying that the, the rem is based on the root, it's relative to the root HTML elements font size, it doesn't matter that these list items are nested. If we look at our computed styles on the M list, so let's go ahead and just click on the regular list and look at the computed styles. We can see that the font size is 14. Okay, so that's what we plugged in. That is what we expect. Let's click on our inspect for the nested list item. You can see that the font size is 12, and that's because of the math that's being applied. If we would go in here and do some calculations. What's happening on the M 
unordered list is it's sizing the unordered list to 0.875, which gives us the size of 14. The nested list, though, is being multiplied by that 0.875 again, which is giving us a resulting size of 12. So when you're dealing with M's, the only real way to solve this problem is that you have to make a rule for your nested list. So we're going to have to make a specific rule and we would have to set the font size to 1M. And if we do that, then the problem is going to be solved because then the math is going to multiply those back up. Now, our solution, it, you know, it's just one line of code. It's not that big of a deal. But if you have a website where you're using a lot of nesting, this can be a huge hassle to have to write all these styles over and over again. Another great reason for using REMS is in the fact that if you want to make a change to the overall font sizing, it's super easy to do. So let me show you how that works as well. I'm going to come back into my code right here and we're going to add a line of code and I'll put this at the top. We're going to add a line of code for our HTML. So for our HTML, we're going to set the font size to 100%. So using 100% will result in the browser rendering a font that's equal to the default font size, which we've already talked about is 16 pixels. We need to put that in there so that that is the base unit. And it's not always completely necessary, but it is advisable that you do that. If I save my page and we refresh, you're going to see that no change occurs. So visually, we're not changing anything. But look how easy it is if I decide that I want to make all of my text be 20% larger than what it is. If I come back into my code editor and I simply change the one line of code, the font size for HTML to 120%, and we come back into our browser and refresh, you can see what happens. The pixel value stays because they're a fixed value. That number is not going to increase. But look what happens to my M's and my REM's. They size up accordingly. And if we were to look in our developer tools, those handy little developer tools, you can see that the font size for the paragraphs in 2 as well as in 3 are still set at 0.875 rems. If we look at the computed size though, you can see that the font size is being scaled up to 17 pixels. It's no longer 14 pixels. That's the number that we're using in our code, but with one line of code, I can size up. And this is extremely flexible. You can make a global change to your website by just updating one line of code. So this in itself should be a very compelling reason for you to use a relative value of units, either M's or REM's. And then we talked about the power of the new unit REM's. So as, lo as long as you're not worried about browser support with those older versions of the browsers, it's really quite safe to use M's because even though the status is still at recommendation, it's still widely supported in all of the modern browsers. So hopefully now you understand how to use REMS and how you understand calculating the units that you'll need to use. You might want to review this and I would recommend that you try it on your own.